Well, welcome back, everybody. This is a bit of a different one. This is something that I wanted to do after I heard uh, news reports. Uh, I've made it very clear that I don't give a lot of information about myself on Twitter or other social media, but I have said, and as you can tell by the flag, I'm a Texan. I live in North Texas, DFW. And tonight we had a, uh, a pretty good size squall line for a storm that just went over us. And it did spawn a funnel cloud. It did spawn uh, a small tornado up a good ways north of me. And then I heard the, what I hear every time we get a lot of rain that the fire department has had to deploy swift water equipment to rescue people who got stuck. And this is coming from me having worked as a firefighter. Uh, I, I mean, I was taught early on, you don't drive into water if you don't know exactly how deep it is and that your vehicle can handle it. All through high school, I drove cars. I had a 1982 Datsun 280Z, then a Chrysler LeBaron after my sister didn't like it, and sold the Datsun to buy something else. And then I had a Dodge Charger. It was an 80s model, the hatchback. But that means literally the amount of water I can drive through is about 6 to 12 inches if it's not rushing water. People don't believe this, but a foot of rushing water can sweep you off the road. It can. Water has a lot of power. And you just don't push your luck. I carry a punch. It's actually just a sheet metal punch I got from Home Depot in my car. Because with modern vehicles, uh, ironically not my 2016 Patriot, which I greatly wish I'd kept, have power everything. Uh, the only thing not power in my Jeep Renegade that I have now that I'm trying to get rid of is the seat, okay? Power mirrors, power steering, power locks, power doors, uh, windows. Everything is power. So if I ended up getting stuck and it was a lot of water, my battery's going to die on me and I'm going to kill the car so that it's not running the alternator and all that, but I may not be able to roll my windows down. So a punch, and for those of you who've used a sheet metal punch, it's just a very fine point, I'm talking just very fine point piece of metal attached to a spring that when you push against a piece of sheet metal, it will leave a divot. This also will shatter tempered glass. Uh, King of Random did a couple of tests, and so did Mythbusters, where they tried certain things. You know, the, the old idea of put your keys to where they're sticking through and you can punch. doesn't always work, especially for... The elderly, for younger people, for smaller people, it, you don't have the power. I mean, I'm 6'1", 250 pounds. I'm not a little dude. I am not weak by any means. And even I can't punch a window and break it from inside a car where I have no leverage, even with my keys. That couple of dollars on that window punch, and I've, I'm going to make sure that my nephew, my brother, and my parents still have theirs. If not, I'll get them another one could save your life. Because if you've watched Mythbusters, Adam tried the whole wait until the car fills up with water, then you can open it because the pressure's right. You're going to have to hold your breath a long dang time. <coughs> because it takes forever to walk for water to get into your car when the windows aren't down. Now, Yes, if you know that you're not going to be able to avoid, you know, like you're sliding down towards water, roll your windows down or just get out of the car before it happens. I would rather open my door and jump and get bumps and bruises than be stuck in the water. It's just not worth the risk. But the other thing that, or other things I know to stay, of course, you're going to see a lot of people lose power in a heavy thunderstorm. A good probably 50% of the nearest town to me lost power. And you have to be able to plan for things like that. Because other than this, you're probably not going to be able to do much. Uh, I know that we have 
a telephone line, old school, in my parents' house next door, and we have an old school phone. And that is, as long as there the line is not broken and it's not down, you'll get a dial tone, and they cannot deny a 911 call. Same thing with a cell phone. Keep one charged, even if it's not in use. You don't use it. I have an old Motorola, uh, it's not the Razor, but it, uh, it Sanyo Katana. And I keep it charged because even though I've not had that phone turned on on my account in over four years, I can still dial 911 from it. The other thing that I noticed, sadly, and I'll admit, I'm a weirdo, okay? May 1995, I had, actually it wasn't, actually it was, it was, uh, I believe it was Cinco de Mayo. So it was May 1995, I was a high school senior, and I was working for a photo lab in Arlington, and there were three good-sized tornadoes, I'm talking probably F3 or F4, that ran straight down I-30 eastbound. <coughs> My store faced I-30. My parents, who both worked for the same company, were there helping me with some brand new equipment, getting the chemicals mixed, getting it balanced so that it would be ready to go the next day. And the sirens went off, so everybody went to the back, except my dad and I, who were begging to be let outside with our cameras so we could get pictures of the tornadoes. Until my mother threatened to break our legs and the store manager said she'd help, so we went back behind the load-bearing wall. But I didn't even when all the phones are going off and it said tornado spotted, seek shelter, I would have did a thing. I, I believe I heard the manager. We were eating at a fast food place and I had already looked. I knew that the tornado was not going to come towards us. It was running the wrong direction at a too fast a speed. Even if it turned, it would have turned after it got past us. So I, having lived in Texas 42 years, survived multiple tornadoes, studied them. I'm fascinated by them. I was 95% sure I could have walked outside and had a cigarette and not had a problem other than maybe going to get lit. But the nonchalance of so many people to not even ask the people at the restaurant, where do we go if we need to seek shelter? Look at all this glass. And I can tell you, if they had gone off and said, it's coming right for you. I would have been the one screaming, get into the kitchen, get into the kitchen, because that's behind very thick, load-bearing walls. And it's away from the glass. And I would have been flipping tables out of the way so people could get there. Thankfully, like I said, my dad and I both fascinated by tornadoes. We were both watching the radar, sitting there in the emergency power lighting of a fast food place, eating our dinner. And, of course, as we thought, as we were 95% sure it all blew over, we're fine. I'm sitting at home, power, internet, no problem. But if there's one thing I want to impress on people, it's that listen to the people telling, giving you advice. If they say... Tornado spotted, seek shelter. Even if you're not running to the front, sorry, you're not running to the counter saying, do we need to get into the kitchen? Where do we Where do we seek shelter? We're, we're surrounded by glass. You need to watch. You need to be very alert. Second, do not drive into water, okay? My buddy and I, that I roomed with in 99, he had an old Wrangler with no radio, no doors, no roof, but it had a snorkel and it had a winch. And we did have to pull somebody out of some water. And thankfully we were able to do it without having to drive out in there because it was a very short crossing. But still, we had to anchor to a big old tree and winch her out. And her car was still dead, but luckily we got her out. It's not worth your life. But that said, you can find yourself, I've seen evidence where people are just driving on a normal road and all of a sudden this just wall of water comes out of nowhere because it broke a dam, sweeps them off, and they're stuck. You can't plan for it. 
That's why you keep a window punch. That's why you keep a thermal blanket. That's why you keep that cell phone that you know is always charged. That's why you keep bottles of water and other things. I mean, I have a kit in my car, three bottles of water, a thermal blanket, the window punch, a flare, first aid kit. I've, yeah, I'm a, probably a little more prepared than most because I was a firefighter, but it's just common sense. And I really want to impress on you just think outside the box. And I mean, it, if you live in an area where it never floods, talk to people who live in areas where it does. I know that uh, Houston, when we had Harvey and all, and the other hurricanes that have hit Texas, they know it's going to flood when a hurricane's coming up through the Gulf. And they evac and they get out and people know how to, and they have hurricane and flood insurance. So they plan for it. But I don't think people that were as far north as it did during Harvey and the last couple, they weren't thinking it was going to flood. And I saw tweets from people asking if anyone had a little flat bottom boat because their family was stuck at their home. The home wasn't flooded, but the driveway was, and they couldn't get out. And it's little things like that. So look, see if your driveway is in a low outlying area. Check around your house to make sure that if it's if you're on the low land, just watch. It change how you think. Look at things and ask yourself that question. If we got 12 inches of rain in an hour, what's going to happen around here? My dad and I made sure in the last year or two that we have dug and built in little embankments and things to direct water. But if, if we got a foot in an hour, it's going to be over that. And honestly, we're going to be trying to get out. And thankfully, we live in an area where we could between my my Jeep and his SUV and my brother's truck, we could get out, but you have to think about these things. Thankfully, I've heard no reports of injuries. I know there was a report of an 18-wheeler. I believe it was near Paris. I'm not 100% sure. Up northeast Dallas. That got uh, f knocked over from a more than likely straight line winds. But that is where they did have confirmation of a small funnel. And I've not heard any reports of injuries, no reports of death. The fire department probably uh, told people your car is destroyed. Let's take, get you home. And things like that. But just remember, it's not worth it to try to do something like drive through water or whatnot. Just remember and err on the side of caution. For anybody else in North Texas who's had this, I know my area in very far south, Tarrant, uh, very far north, Johnson, we didn't get a lot. Uh, mostly, I can tell you, we didn't get a lot because I was able to drive, use my driveway to get to my house, not have to walk. But I know a lot of I know a lot of areas got hit pretty hard, and I really I hope you guys are doing all right. Um, just like I said, listen to the warnings, listen to the alerts, listen to the fire departments when they tell you things, the police departments when they tell you things, because trust me, they've been consulted by experts on how to rescue people from these situations. So if they know how to get you out, they know how you can avoid getting in to a situation. That said, I'm going to cut it off here for uh, this video because I'm getting kind of tired. As you can probably tell by the window, it is night. Uh, I have been fighting... Uh, flare-up of a back issue for the last couple of days, and I was just able to finally start moving around a few hours ago, so I am happy with that, but I am going to put the, the heating pad back on it and relax for the rest of the night so that I can hopefully not have another flare-up, because I really don't need to use up all my vacation time. In the meantime, make sure to uh, subscribe so you're kept up to date on all new content. I really don't have a set format. I'm not responding to the news. I'm not this one topic or that one topic. This really is a personal video diary, basically, where my ADD-riddled brain spits out something that I want to talk about, and I do this. I hope you enjoy them. I hope I can help people. I hope I can spark conversation and debate. But, you, like I said, need to subscribe so that you're... and 
ring the bell so that you're notified when something posts. Uh, also, please, if you like to like the video, I'm going to put the standard end screen where uh, you should be able to see, uh, I believe it's going to be video here and subscribe here. Uh, I'm still learning all this, but I'm looking at some classes, so hopefully I can start making better content. That's it, guys. Everybody have a wonderful weekend and a great week next week.